What's up, YouTube? It's Kate and John, and we're back again with another video just, just like we promised. Promise. So, as you can tell by the title, today we are going to be telling you why you should not retire in the Philippines. But before I say that, I just want you guys to know stick around to the end of the video because I'm going to give you one major reason why you should retire in the Philippines and that might outweigh everything that I'm going to tell you about not retiring in the Philippines. Okay guys, so before I just jump into the video and give you guys the 10 reasons why you should not retire in the Philippines, I just wanna say that all the videos that you watched probably before you got to my video was a bunch of propaganda. I don't wanna put down other people's videos, but what I will say is that I've researched the Philippines a ton before we actually moved to the Philippines, and majority of the videos that we watched were not true. They were not accurate, and they didn't really give you a true impression of what the Philippines was going to be like. I just wanna make that clear that everything that we're gonna talk about in this video is really true, it's from the heart, and we're not gonna beat around the bush about anything. If you are Filipino, just know that we are not coming for your culture, we are not trying to put your culture down but us as Americans we feel like it's only right to give people a truth a dose of the truth about what we went through while living in the Philippines for three entire months it's just a comparison and that's all between life in America where we grew up compared to the Philippines where we lived for a few months that's all right so we're gonna jump right into it we're gonna give you the 10 reasons why you should not retire in the Philippines and hopefully you guys agree or disagree whatever but drop it down below in the comments and let me know how you feel about it so our first impressions of the Philippines for me was completely off from what I thought it was gonna be as soon as we landed in the Philippines I already was getting the feel of like this is not what I thought it was going to be we stepped foot outside of the airport and it was completely Completely dirty when we went outside power lines there were like power lines on top of power lines on top of power lines on top of power lines it looked completely unsafe I had never seen anything like this in the US and there were just dogs everywhere trash all over the street tons of traffic like it was completely crazy to me and what I thought was we're gonna come into this beautiful place you hear all over the place oh Philippines is so beautiful well the beaches are beautiful and otherwise it was not what you thought um, what we saw in on YouTube no it was all propaganda like I said earlier um, before the video actually started and people really only show you like the bright and beautiful parts of the Philippines mm -hmm. they don't show you that most of the Philippines is slums dirty rundown poverty and it's not really enjoyable to step foot outside of your house every day and that's all you see. Okay, so the next point that we're going to talk about is corrupt, corrupt government within the Philippines. Yeah. So what I mean by that is when we first arrived to the Philippines, I quickly found out that any paperwork or any documentation that you needed to fill out yeah. to pay for things or to apply for a visa, whatever it was, there was like no customer service to help you. Online, the instructions were completely ridiculous. They didn't list out everything that you needed. And coming from the US, that's not something that I'm used to. In the US, they list everything out for you on the webpage and you know exactly what's required of you. And it's not confusing. In the Philippines, I had to sometimes make four and five trips to a government office to get something done because the instructions were just not clear. And another thing I noticed were the cops that pulled us over all the time. Mm -hmm. They always asked for money. They, it was literally keeping money in the car for when the cop pulls us over for no, no apparent reason, he's gonna ask for money and then you can go about your way. Yeah, I think we were getting racially profiled in the Philippines. We would get pulled pulled over like in the city of Manila for absolutely no reason. And then next thing you know, the cops were asking us for money to avoid them taking away our driver's license or giving us a ticket and us having to appear in court. And it, it happened on three separate occasions. So this wasn't just a one-time thing. This is an ongoing problem in the Philippines. Okay guys, so this next point is like super important to me. It was a really big deal to me. And that point is going to be cleanliness of the Philippines. So in the Philippines, once we got to the Philippines, another thing that quickly was revealed to us is that the poverty level is super, super high. Worse than anything I have ever seen in my life. We rented a car, so we were driving all around the city. We stayed in Manila, Angeles City, and Cebu. And I can honestly say in all three of those places, there were homeless babies sleeping outside. And I mean like newborn, babies. newborn babies. Yeah. Not in a car seat, no clothes, naked, sleeping on the side of the street on a sidewalk. With mom and dad, but. Yeah, like in 100 degree weather. It was yeah. super, super bad. 
Anytime you got stopped at a stoplight or a stop sign or an intersection, kids are coming up to the window, pressing their faces on yeah. your car window like this and asking for money and going like this because they want money to eat. That was something that really bothered me in the Philippines because it was non-stop. It was every day, every time you went outside and it was just extremely sad to see the level of poverty within these families to the point where their newborn babies are sleeping outside in 100 degree weather on the street. That really bothered me and there was nothing that anyone told me about the Philippines that could prepare me to see something like that every single day. The next point we wanted to cover is the traffic in the Philippines. John was the primary driver while we were in the Philippines, so I'm yeah. actually going to let him talk about this subject because he knows yes. more than me. I was a little nervous driving in Manila and Angeles City and Cebu was a lot better, but it's a free-for-all out there. It's, if you can see in the pictures of the traffic, you basically have no laws, no lines on the um, streets, and it's a, a rhythm that you have to get into to understand you can pull right out in front of people. There's people walking down the street, mopeds all around you, cars pulling out in front of you. All of a sudden, the lane will end, but you just, you kind of learn the rhythm. And it's super difficult. We almost got into accidents plenty of times because, like he said, it's like a free-for-all. There's no lines on the road. There's no traffic signs. Nothing to let you know what's going on. And when you use your GPS, the street signs do not match up with what the GPS is telling you to do. And it's all super confusing. And one more thing I wanted to add about the traffic in the Philippines is the gas. The gas in the Philippines is over $4 a gallon. It's super expensive. So that's one thing in the Philippines that is not cheap. Don't let people tell you that it's cheap because it is not cheap. And most of the cars that we rented in the Philippines, they didn't get good gas mileage. They're old cars. They just blow exhaust out and you're constantly having to put gas in the car. So that was a big expense for us and a big waste of money. All right guys, so that brings us to our next point which is going to be food in the Philippines. I'm gonna talk about grocery stores, restaurants, and street food. The first point that I wanted to bring up is about grocery stores. So when I got to the Philippines and the, one of the first things we did was go grocery shopping, I was immediately claustrophobic, okay? If you're from America, we are used to shopping at Walmart, Publix, Kroger's, Target, places like that. There's nothing like that in the Philippines. So just be aware when you go to the Philippines, there's no grocery stores that are even remotely similar to that. All of the stores are very, very small. They do not have air conditioning in the stores. Super hot and there's tons of people all scrambling around like ants looking for their groceries. I was extremely disappointed doing the grocery shopping because there was nothing familiar, nothing even close to what I'm used to so that I could get accustomed to the new food and the new way that I was going to be eating in the Philippines. I didn't wanna just jump into it and start trying to cook Filipino dishes. I wanted to have something familiar, you know, and then start to submerge myself into the culture, but unfortunately, I couldn't do that. Yeah, and then even the restaurants, what we ended up doing was using a delivery service called Food Panda because it was actually food that we can look at the picture and order something. When you're driving around the streets, there's no signs for anything, especially restaurants. You just kind of have to know where they are. It looks really junky from the outside, but when you go inside, it's clean and the food is decent, but we really got used to that Food Panda. Yeah, Food Panda was a total lifesaver for us. And like he was saying, the restaurants are just hard to find. There's no advertisements, no signs, no nothing. They're kind of holes in the walls. And if you're not a local, you really don't know where to eat. Um, so the next thing that I wanted to say about the food in the Philippines is the street food. This is a big deal for me because we actually got food poisoning one time from some of the street food. They have wet markets and stuff like that. And if you guys don't know what a wet market is, I'm gonna put a picture right here so that you guys can see what a wet market is. Um, we have not eaten any food from a wet market, but by eating the street food, we did get severely sick. Well, I did, I was throwing up and stuff. John was up all night bit. with a stomach ache. Yeah, he, there was definitely something wrong, but he didn't throw up like I did. Mm -hmm. um, and the, the conditions of the street food, just not good. Flies everywhere, cockroaches everywhere. This is just stuff that I was not prepared for and people don't talk about in their TikToks and stuff when they're showing yeah. how good the street food is. And they don't talk about how the food sits out there in 100 degree weather all day and they don't change the food out. The raw chicken is just sitting there touching other, other foods and just mixed contamination and cross contamination. It's just 
It, to me, it's very unsanitary and I wouldn't recommend it. Our next point that we're going to be talking about is the living, living conditions, conditions of the Philippines. This one is a major, major deal, especially if you're going to be living in the Philippines for longer than 30 days and you're not just coming for a vacation. The most important thing that I'm going to say right here, right now, if you guys are still watching this video, do not believe the social media hype, okay guys? I know that I, myself, am guilty of putting up videos showing you guys a couple of our houses that we stayed in in the Philippines and advertising that they were $500 a month. That was the truth, that was literally the truth, but what I wanna make clear is that those houses were lacking in a lot of things. They looked nice, they were big, they were spacious, they were roomy, but they did not have air conditioning, they did not have hot water in the bathrooms, no hot water in the sinks. They were lacking a lot of things that Americans take for granted for comfort. So, just like I didn't mention in the video that there was no AC and no hot water, other social media influencers don't mention that stuff either yeah. and that's why I'm making this video because I don't want to lead you guys into something like social media influencers have led me to believe that the Philippines is glitz and glamour when it in fact is not so the thing to, to me the thing about the housing is it doesn't sound like a big idea big deal to not have AC because you can open windows and all so one day's not bad, two days isn't bad, but it just wears on you as you're there for months. We were constantly sweating every single day. In the Philippines, it gets over 100 degrees every single day. There are no cool days in the Philippines. So if you're a person that easily gets hot, just know you are going to be sweating and there's no way to escape it. Most of the Airbnbs that we stayed in, actually all of the Airbnbs that we stayed in, only had one AC inside the house, which was in the bedroom. So if you're in the living room or the kitchen trying to enjoy your day, just know you can't because it is super, super hot and there's just no way to escape that. Like I said, no hot water to wash dishes, no hot water for showers, and I feel like people need to know that because we didn't know that when we got to the Philippines and we were completely shocked and blown away at it. So we're not gonna spend a lot of time on this point, but I do think it's important to bring it up. So the next topic that we are going to cover are public, public bathrooms. bathrooms in the Philippines. Now, this is crazy and this was a shocker to me. Yeah. Most of the bathrooms in the Philippines are holes in the ground. And if they're not holes in the ground and you actually get blessed to be able to have a toilet, just know there is no, no toilet, toilet paper. paper no toilet paper if you want toilet paper you better yeah. bring your own because yeah. that's something that i learned very quick and i mean even in the mall where it's very clean and tidy yeah. no toilet paper they do have a hand bidet that you can use but if you're not from the philippines and you're not used to that 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 could be a little confusing yep. the next topic we're going to be talking about is transportation, transportation. in the philippines so this one is a little, I guess it could be your own opinion on how you want to feel about this. Um, the transportation to me was not up to par. Mm. Tons of jeepneys, and I mean old jeepneys. They look like they were from the 80s. Yeah. A lot of smoke coming out of the back of them. No AC, maybe like 40 people crammed into one jeepney. They're like sitting on each other's laps. Yeah. Legs are hanging out the back of the jeepneys doesn't look comfortable i never rode in one john never rode in one because we just rented cars but we could see from the back though when we're you know in traffic and you look in there and it's just packed with people and people jumping in and out as the thing is pulling away yeah so that was crazy and then scooters you can rent a scooter for very cheap um we opted not to because if you rent two scooters it's like the same price as renting a car for a week mm -hmm. but the scooters are just everywhere i would not say that that is a safe way to get around the city because the roads are just packed it's crazy like we talked about earlier in the video there's no laws on the road and i didn't want to get a scooter so i never rented a scooter john did rent a scooter once yeah one day was eight dollars which is a great price um, but it was hectic out there and scary because the cars don't care that their scooters there and the scooters clog up everything so I don't recommend a scooter unless you do a, a side road or something. Yeah, so transportation is really up to you what you like and what you don't like, but I would say transportation options are limited. Yep. All right, guys, very important point here that I do not want to skip. I have to put this one in here. Yeah. The next thing we're going to talk about is scams. scams in the Philippines. So this is crazy. I feel like we got scammed like hundreds of times while we were in the Philippines. And even if you are aware of the scams in the Philippines, there's almost nothing you could do about it. Yep. Um, I'm just going to give you guys a couple of examples. 
Window washing in the Philippines, you could be parking your car at a mall or a grocery store, supermarket, whatever. People will rush up to you, start washing your windows and demand money because you're American. Um, another thing that we saw that was crazy was people will direct you in traffic or direct you on how to park your car and then charge you to park your car in a public parking area that they don't even own it. They, they don't work for the city or anything. They're just demanding money because they help you park your car there. I feel like those are scams. More of an outright scam that people kind of already know about is, of course, as a foreigner, you're going to get charged a bigger price than a local would be getting charged. So as long as you just stay aware of that and you know that that's going on, you can watch and see how much the locals are getting charged. And if they try to charge you more, I would just turn it down and walk away and go somewhere else. Yeah, I would recommend when you're in those markets and they're fun and they're interesting to, to go to, but I only bought stuff where they had the price advertised. So I knew I was getting a good deal. Exactly. That brings us to the next topic of discussion, which is going to be pets in the Philippines. If you want to bring your pet to the Philippines, just know that it is very difficult. Yeah. There is a long, lengthy process that you need to go through. If you guys want me to walk you through that process and let you know what to do, drop that down below in the comments and let me know and I will gladly make a video. Another thing, bringing your pet out of the country to go to another country from the Philippines, very difficult. Yeah. The Philippines is a rabies infested country. So just know when you bring your pet to the Philippines, if you stay longer than 30 days, you are going to have a very, very hard time taking your pet anywhere else that's not a rabies infested country. I also made another video that I'm gonna pin to the top right here. Our dog is currently in a quarantine facility yeah. in another country that we're in right now. I'm not gonna reveal where we are, but because we left the Philippines and came to a new country, they seized our dog as soon as we got here because he was in a rabies infested country. So we are without our dog because of that. Another point before I just close this pet portion up is that just know that there are stray dogs in the Philippines everywhere. And I mean hundreds yeah. and thousands of them. There's dead dogs <laughs> everywhere dead cats everywhere, lots of homeless dogs and homeless cats. So if you're an animal lover, that might be something that might bother you because mm. every time you go out your door, you're going to see dogs begging for food, cats begging for food, dogs out there dying from heat exhaustion and everything else. And it's yep. just a really sad sight to and see. And in the roads too. Remember all the, I almost hit a bunch of dogs. And we saw a dog get hit. Yeah. The person yeah. didn't even stop. The, they hit the dog and the dog just yelped and yelped and went over on the side of the road and died. Yep and there's nothing you can do about it. Okay guys, so all in all, those are the 10 points that we wanted to bring to your attention. I just wanna say that the Philippines is a good place to vacation. Yeah. If you're coming to the Philippines and you're not gonna stay longer than 30 days, mm -hmm. I would say you would have no issues. Um, mm -hmm. But if you're actually thinking about retiring in the Philippines and living in the Philippines full time, these are things that you should really take seriously and also know you can't really know what it feels like to experience all of these things unless you come and experience it for yourself. Yeah. So, you know, just take heed to what I'm saying in the video and make sure you really consider every point that I made because it's the truth and people don't like to tell you the truth about the Philippines, but we told the truth about everything. And I would think, say, mm -hmm. suggest to you, just come over here for a short period with that mindset. Um, once you're here, if you like it, then go ahead and get those plans uh, in works. But otherwise, just kind of come with a suspicion about it and see if you like it. Yeah. All right, so we told you to stick around to the end if you wanted to know one very important reason why you should move to the Philippines. And probably the main reason. Yeah, the main reason yeah. that most tourists and yeah. foreigners and expats come over to the Philippines is because of the exchange rate. So yes, the exchange rate is one majorly positive thing about the Philippines. The US dollar and other currencies go very far in the Philippines. But with that being said, that's why there is a level of poverty in the Philippines yeah. because their dollar does not go far in other countries at all. And their currency is not, it's just not a good currency and their condition yeah. is not good. So if your main objective to moving in the Philippines is to save money and you don't care about any of the other things that I said, yeah. then disregard everything that I said and just know that the exchange rate is great and it is true. Everything in the Philippines is cheap except for the gas. 
So in closing, we just wanted to say that while we did enjoy coming to another country, specifically the Philippines, and we did enjoy the activities that we did in the Philippines, we would not recommend coming to the Philippines to live. That's just our personal opinion. I just want to be mindful of our Philippine viewers. We're not trashing your country. It is just completely different from the United States. If you don't mind any of the stuff that I talked about, then this country might be for you. But for us personally, it didn't work out and we probably won't have a reason to visit the Philippines again. So we probably won't be back, but I'm grateful for the experience. And if yep. other people love it, then hey, I'm proud for you. Yep. And I think the main thing I learned is, is thankfulness. Thankful for your country and the things you never thought were important to you, uh, you just have a, a rude awakening and right. realize how, how good you have it. Yep, that's exactly true. So you guys, that brings us to the end of today's video. I hope that you guys enjoyed and took in everything that I said. If you did, please drop a like. I am so close to 2000 subscribers and that will help me to get my channel monetized. So please drop a like and please subscribe and turn on that notification bell. Yep. If you made it all the way to the end of the video, please drop down in the comments the word cheese, just so I know that you guys stuck around to the end. And if you've been here since the beginning of my YouTube journey, you know what we say at the end of every video. So say it with us, you guys. Stay, stay up, stay safe, and stay, stay subscribed. subscribed. Peace, Peace out until next time. time.